lesbians. But then she also asserts that lesbians just don't uh, need men for anything. She says that gold actors are sharp and aggressive and tough and financially independent, and they're the decision makers in their own lives. Uh, let, let me just read some of these lyrics to, the, to give you a, a little example of um, how she goes about making her point. She sings, come on a time, BD women, they ain't going to need no men. Oh, the way they treat us is a low down and dirty thing. BD women, you sure can't understand. They got a head like a machine gun and they walk just like a natural man. BD women, they all done laid their claim. They can lay their jive just like a natural man. BD women, BD women, you know they sure is rough. They have drunk up many whiskeys and they sure can strut their stuff. BD women, you know they work and they make their dough. And when they get ready to spend it, they know they have to go. Sometimes these uh, blues with lesbian subject matter really seem uh, geared to heterosexual listeners who were uh, going to be uh, judgmental around it. But it seems to me that almost always in those blues there's a subversive message. Uh, and that subversive message is that lesbianism really is superior to heterosexuality. Um, there's one, for example, called It's Dirty But Good, and that uh, focuses specifically on, the, on lesbian uh, sex and the excitement of the forbidden. I know women that don't like men the way they do is a crime sin. It's dirty but good. Oh, yes, it's dirty but good. There ain't much difference. It's just dirty but good. I found a, another one by um, a gay male singer, which is about lesbians, uh, George Hanna, this in the late 1920s. It's, um, it's a very graphic song about the role of the clitoris in, in lesbian lovemaking. And he, he suggests in that song that um, lesbianism actually spread as a result of um, World War I. He says, before the war, a lot of these dames had nothing to do. Uncle Sam thought he'd give them a fighting chance, packed up all the men and sent them on to France sent them over there, the Germans to hunt, left the women at home to try out all their new stunts. Well, their new stunts are primarily a mutual stimulation of what he calls the boy in the boat, which is the title of the song, obviously a reference to the, to the clitoris. Um, he says, when you see two women walking hand in hand, just look them over and try to understand. They'll go to these parties, have the lights down low, only those parties where women can you think I lying? Just ask Pat Ann. Took many abroad for many a man. Face is still wrinkled and his breath smells like soap. Still talking about that boy in the boat. Well, lesbian sex on the one hand is, is equated to, uh, to stunts, but on the other hand, it's clear that it's uh, efficacious enough to take women away from, uh, from men. I think it, it, uh, it has, a, the whole song has an interesting purpose on one hand. the male heterosexual listener just enough to be provocative, but on the other hand, it, it has this hidden message to lesbians uh, It's really a celebration of homosexual eroticism. It's interesting that, that many of those songs were sung at, um, at heterosexual gatherings, and I'm sure that homosexuals often uh, infiltrate at heterosexual gatherings, but heterosexuals were apparently fascinated. The, uh, the double message of those songs was often frequently uh, communicated through the known bisexuality of, of the singer. Um, Bessie Smith, for example, frequently sang songs of that nature. She has one song that was called Foolish Man Blues. Uh, it was all the rage in Harlem in 1927. Uh, it, um, it was frequently reprinted. In, uh, in fact, in some of those novels that I referred to earlier, I found variations The way Bessie Smith sang it was, there's two things got me puzzled, there's two things I don't understand. That's a mannish acting woman and a stiff and twisting woman acting man. But what's fascinating about this is it's called the foolish man's blues. That is, the speaker is foolish because he's naive. He doesn't understand this uh, mannish acting woman and this uh, woman acting. sexuality, I've discovered, wasn't limited only to uh, the Harlem nightclubs and, uh, and race records. Um, I found uh, indications, for example, of, of, of drag balls in Harlem, like at the Savoy, balls uh, that uh, would welcome both uh, gay men and, uh, and lesbians and, 
Picasso's describes. That is, there was a real crossover. These heterosexuals may have come to watch, but ended up mixing freely with people who were homosexual and perhaps often making uh, various kinds of contacts with them. Well, why, why could this happen in Harlem? I think for several reasons. One reason I think it, it could happen as far as black integrated. 